Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, a really exciting day here today. I've been teasing this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and today I'm gonna to finally reveal the donor car for the drivetrain for our 71 Cuda. Now, originally, you guys remember back a few months ago, we talked about it, and I've talked about it on several of the live Q&As too. You know, I did buy a 426 Hemi for it, started acquiring the parts for it, and then really to have the car ready when I want to, which, call me crazy, but I plan on having that car. It's not gonna be completely finished, but it is going to be at least rolling, possibly under its own power, at the Evanston Car Show July 22nd, which is about a month and a half away. So a lot of work to do. I was, there's no way I was gonna have that 426 Hemi ready in time, and then also the cost of it, man. Uh, you know, I've heard that the, you know, there's two things about Hemis, or two types of people when it comes to Hemis, those that have them and those that want them, okay? I was definitely in the those that want them category. I had one, started acquiring the parts and everything else. It's a very, very expensive build to get done. Like I'm talking 20, 30, 40 grand possibly, depending on how far you wanna go with it. I wanted modern, you know, drivability with it. I wanted reliability. I wanted to be able to jump in that car, take it anywhere I wanted to go, any show that I want to, drive it across the country if I want to. And uh, yeah, just the timing of it didn't really work out. Maybe for a future build, we might use it. We'll see. But with also QA1 coming on board and uh, helping me out a ton with all of the, you know, the four link, the coilovers, everything tubular you could think of. We got Willwood brakes, we've got everything for that car ready to go in it right now with all that modern uh, suspension and everything else you know the car really really deserves to have a modern drivetrain okay so when you start looking at options you know we're not going the ls route sorry guys <laughs> that'll make a lot of you guys happy it'll make some of you guys upset but we're not doing that to that car uh, of course you first start looking at Hellcats, right? And then you start to come back down to reality and looking at budgets and different things. And uh, you know, a few months ago, I showed you guys the 6.1 Hemi six speed that we picked up for the 68 Charger. You know, that one, I felt like I didn't go as far as I wanted to with it. I really, really wanted that 6.4 392 Hemi that you find in the Chargers, the Challengers, right? The Scat Pack and all that kind of stuff. So I started looking at it guys, and uh, I don't think I could have picked up a better parts donor whatever you want to call it that's suitable for our 71 cuda so without further ado let me introduce you guys to our 2011 dodge challenger srt8 392 six speed Okay, so you guys are probably looking at thinking, wow, why would you tear that car apart? And I'll be honest with you, I've had some conflicting thoughts in my own head about trying to build this thing, and that's not why I got it, okay? I got this because the 6.4 six speed was in it, which apparently turns out to be a whole lot more rare than I thought. Um, if you start looking around at the auction sites or really anywhere, you're gonna find, you know, about triple the amount of automatics that are out there versus um, the six speeds. But, you know, budgetary wise, okay, when you start looking at, you know, the 6.4 Hemis with the six speed turnkey pallets, you're gonna be in that $12,000, $13,000 range. You pay to get it shipped to your house, which, you know, if I'm going through Cleveland Power and Performance, for example, you know, it's like a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks to get that thing freighted here. So all in, you're gonna be around 15,000 for just the engine, transmission and harness and the computers, right? So I'll just tell you right now, this car was purchased from an IAAI auction for $7,000. This car runs. <laughs> This car drives. This car runs. 
this car does wicked burnouts. <laughs> Everything about it operates, functions just as it should. Really from the doors forward is all that got messed up with this collision. As you guys saw, the bags did not go off. And the steering wheel, you, know, you gotta be really delicate when you open up these doors here. You, know, you don't wanna push too hard on these cause yeah. Anyways, but none of the seat bags went off. Everything is here with the exception of the damn shift knob. Somebody had the audacity to steal that thing out of here. What's crazy, they stole the shift knob and they left these badass wheels that a buddy of mine that likes Mustangs is probably gonna want for his build. But uh, but yeah, so everything operates as it should. Um, turn signals, lights, I mean, you name it guys. It all works, it all runs, and uh, yeah, shoot. Everything works. So. I know I'm gonna probably break a few hearts out there when I say that this car is going to get completely gutted, but either I'm going to use it or a very close friend of mine is going to use it for a future body swap. So the wheelbase dimensions between these, I believe are just one inch or so off from the um, chargers. So a lot of these are used for those. I know he's got a really, really cool build going right now that he could possibly use it for. But uh, you know, this car's got the Brembos, it's got you know, the sick Mustang wheels on it here. You know, and what, what's really kind of pathetic about these wheels, you know, if you're gonna go with something like this, guys, you gotta go full commit, okay? If you're gonna do the iridescent wheels, okay, these are actually like beauty rings. <laughs> these pop right off of there, and uh, underneath is the, you know, the chrome or whatever the plated, um, you know, finishes on these wheels. But yeah, they're pretty, pretty awful. But, this car does it for me, guys. This car checks all the boxes that I was looking for. Um, and, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, I am going to keep like the old seats in the car. I've actually got a set of awesome, awesome 71 seats that are original black. So the Cuda is going to have a black interior. But, uh, you know, if you guys need any parts from this here, if you need seats, you need the dash, whatever, okay, it's all going to be available. Um, it's got Brembos on all four corners. And uh, it's actually got a pretty cool sounding exhaust, which I thought might be aftermarket. It's just a muffler delete. <laughs> it's nothing special. It is a sunroof though. So, but, uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys if there's any other parts that I can possibly use for this car or from this car on the 71 Cuda. I would love, love to hear. So you're probably wondering, what does it sound like? And does it do good burnouts? Check this out. so that's gonna wrap it up so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put this back in the driveway I'm finishing up right now the rear quarters on the 71 Cuda and all of the leftover little welding and the odds and ends stuff because here in about two weeks or so I'm gonna start tearing into this car we're gonna get the engine out of it like I said QA1 hooked me up huge and I've got the engine mounts for the Gen 3 Hemi. I've got pretty much everything that I need to actually get this engine into the car. We know it runs. We know it runs really, really good as you guys just saw. <laughs> so yeah, this should be really fun and this should really catapult and accelerate our build um, and really take it to the next level, guys. I'm so, so freaking excited. So that said, if you guys haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and uh, yeah. I'm going to go get to work. I'll see you guys next time.